Welcome back to Very Ordinary Differential Equations. In this lecture, we study how to solve differential equations with impulse forcing functions. Let's just remember what an impulse function is. An impulse function at time t0, denoted by delta of t minus t0, it's zero everywhere else, and at that time t0, it has such an infinitely large value that the area under that single value is equal to one. Now, it's not exactly a function in the sense that we're used to thinking, but it does have some very useful applications. It's also possible to formally justify it, although we didn't really go into the formal justification. We did compute, however, the Laplace transform. The Laplace transform of an impulse at time t0 is just e to the minus t0 s. So let's see how that can help us solve differential equations by solving the initial value problem. y double prime minus 3y prime plus 2y is the exponential 3e to the t, but also an impulse at time 4. The initial values are that y of 0 is 1 and y prime of 0 is 8. Well, let's solve it by taking a Laplace transform. On the left side, L of y double prime minus 3y prime plus 2y. First, we split it apart using linearity. Then, using our known method of computing Laplace transforms of first and second derivatives. And using our initial values that y of 0 is 1 and y prime of 0 is 8. We end up with s squared minus 3s plus 2 times the Laplace transform of y minus s plus 5. Now s squared minus 3s plus 2 factors nicely as s minus 2 times s minus 1, so we're going to preemptively do that. Also, it's going to be handy to have that s minus 5 factored out with the minus 1, so we just have minus quantity s plus 5. So there's the Laplace transform of the left side. What about taking a Laplace transform of the right-hand side? Well, again, we use linearity and split this up as a sum of two different Laplace transforms and factor out that 3. The Laplace transform of e to the t is just 1 over s minus 1, and this is a, an impulse function at time 4. Its Laplace transform is e to the minus 4s. So we've taken the Laplace transform of the left and the right, so we can set them equal to each other, and here we have it. Now we just need to solve for the Laplace transform of y. So we move over the s plus 5 and divide everything by s minus 2 times s minus 1. So right now, we have the Laplace transform of y is 1 over s minus 2 s minus 1 squared. Then we have this exponential e to the minus 4s with 1 over s minus 2 s minus 1. And we also have an s plus 5 over s minus 2 s minus 1. So here's the Laplace transform of y as we have it so far. To find an inverse Laplace transform and solve for y, it's useful to keep the middle term separate. It has this exponential factor. The other two bits do not. We're going to combine them into a single rational function, but this term is going to be kept on its own because it has that exponential factor. All right, so our common denominator between these two terms is s minus 2, s minus 1 squared. So I have numerator 1 and s plus 5 times an extra factor of s minus 1. So there's the rational function for those two terms. Here is the exponential e to the minus 4s times a different rational function. Now what we have to do is apply partial fraction decomposition to both terms. So here's where we are. If we go ahead and expand and simplify the numerator of the first term, it's just s squared plus 4s minus 4. Now we're going to apply partial fraction decomposition to both of these rational functions. So for the first, we end up with negative 7 over s minus 1 minus 1 over s minus 1 squared plus 8 over s minus 2. That's just partial fraction decomposition of this. Factoring out the e to the minus 4s, this rational function will decompose as 1 over s minus 2 minus 1 over s minus 1. So here's how we have represented the Laplace transform of y after doing all of our partial fraction decomposition. Now we can just go term by term finding inverse Laplace transforms. Minus 7e to the t minus te to the t plus 8e to the 2t. And now here, because we have exponentials times recognizable things, the inverse Laplace transform is given by a step function times a shifted version of what we're expecting. So the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 2 is e to the 2t, but it's being shifted by 4 units. So we get a step function, u of t minus 4, e to the 2 times t minus 4. Similarly here, we get u of t minus 4, e to the t minus 4. 
So what we've seen is a general thing that happens a lot. When the differential equation has a forcing function, which is an impulse function, the solution will typically have step functions. The Laplace transform of this gives me an exponential. Once you simplify a bunch of steps, this exponential ends up being multiplied by various rational terms. So you end up with rational functions times exponentials. The inverse Laplace transform takes the form of a step function times something familiar. As a second example, let's solve this initial value problem. 2y double prime minus 5y prime plus 3y is 2 times an impulse function at 1 plus 2 times the sine of t. With initial values y of 0 is 1, y prime of 0 is 0. Well, we take Laplace transforms of both sides, beginning with the left, using linearity, then our known results for the Laplace transform of the first and second derivative, then our initial values y of 0 equals 1 and y prime of 0 equals 0. So at this point, this should be the kind of old hat. We end up with 2s squared minus 5s plus 3 times the Laplace transform of y minus 2s minus 5. Well, what about taking a Laplace transform of the right? Again, we use linearity. And the Laplace transform of an impulse at time 1 is e to the minus 1 times s. And the Laplace transform of sine t is 1 over s squared plus 1. So therefore, we set the Laplace transform of the left equal to the Laplace transform of the right. So we've set the Laplace transform of the left equal to the Laplace transform of the right, and here we are. Now we need to start solving for the Laplace transform of y, so we move 2s minus 5 to the other side. Now we're going to divide everything by 2s minus 3 times s minus 1, which is just the factorization of 2s squared minus 5s plus 3. And we know that we want the exponential term to be kept apart from all the other rational terms that don't have an exponential. After doing all of that work and then doing partial fraction decomposition on all of this divided by 2s minus 3 and s minus 1, you'll end up with this exponential times these two rational terms and then all of these rational terms on their own. Okay, so we've just glossed over, but again, what we did is divide everything by these two terms. You'll end up with 2e to the minus s over all of that, and then this whole rational function over all of that. Apply partial fraction decomposition to those two things individually, and you'll end up with this mess right here. So here's where we stand. The Laplace transform of y has two exponential terms times rational functions, and then a bunch of rational terms. So we just have to take an inverse Laplace transform. Term by term, here we have a step function times an exponential. Here we have a two, two factors out. S minus three halves in the denominator would normally correspond to e to the three halves t. However, since we have this step function at time one, it gets shifted by one. Similarly here, we have a step function at time one. This would normally be e to the t, but it's been shifted and that constant multiple of two has been factored out. So, so far we've taken care of these two terms here. Now we go through the more straightforward approach of all of these rational terms. So first we get 5 thirteenths times the cosine of t plus 1 thirteenth times the sine of t. That's these two terms right here. Then we just get 2 e to the t and 18 thirteenths e to the 3 halves t. So term by term, here is our function y. As our third example, let's solve this problem. y double prime plus 2y prime plus 2y is an impulse at time pi minus 3 times an impulse at time 2 pi with initial values y of 0 is minus 1, y prime of 0 is 2. Well, as we keep doing, take a Laplace transform of both sides. On the left, you'll end up with s squared plus 2s plus 2 times the Laplace transform of y, s plus 2, y of 0 being subtracted, and 1, y prime of 0 being subtracted. So here's our left side. And on the right, the Laplace transform of an impulse at time pi is e to the pi s, Laplace transform of an impulse at time 2 pi, e to the 2 pi s. s squared plus 2s plus 2 can be presented as an irreducible quadratic, s plus 1 squared plus 1 squared. Also, using y of 0 is minus 1, y prime of 0 is 2, those other terms simplify to just being s. And at this point, we want to solve for the Laplace transform of y, so we're going to subtract the s over to the right and divide everything by that irreducible quadratic. 
which gives us this right here. Now, both of these terms are easy enough to find in any table of Laplace transforms. Here, however, when you have a denominator of the form s minus a squared plus b squared, you want your numerator to not be s, but s minus a. So I want a numerator of s plus 1 here. So if I'm subtracting this, I can subtract s plus 1 if I then add back in an extra 1. Okay, so here I would get an extra minus 1 over this, so I add back in 1 over that. And now I have four terms that I can recognize in a table of Laplace transforms. So here's the Laplace transform of y in four pieces, taking inverse Laplace transforms going term by term. This e to the pi s means I'm looking at a step function u of t minus pi. Typically, 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 1, we'd be looking at e to the minus t sine of t, but it all has to be shifted by pi according to this step function. Term two is very similar. One over s plus one squared plus one would typically be e to the minus t sine of t, but with this exponential e to the two pi s, I have a step function and everything gets shifted by the same amount. Our fourth term is just e to the minus t cosine of t, and our last is just e to the minus t sine of t. So here is our solution for terms. Okay, I can slightly simplify. Our first two terms are whatever they are, but here if I want to, I can factor an e to the t out, giving us a sine t minus cos t in parentheses. And again, I just want to point out that our forcing function had two impulses. Our corresponding solution ended up having two step functions. So overall, what have we discussed? The Laplace transform remains a very useful and powerful tool for solving differential equations. Previously, we could take care of forcing functions that were polynomials, sines and cosines, exponential functions, or various products and sums thereof. However, we can now also deal with forcing functions that are piecewise continuous and also impulse functions. The examples we've done always had constant coefficients, however, in the complementary homogeneous equation, the y double prime, the y prime, the y, always just being multiplied by constants. More complicated situations can be addressed using the Laplace transform. For example, you could have something like t squared times y double prime, or t squared times y prime, things like this. It's still possible to solve these problems using Laplace transforms. In my experience, they tend not to arise in a typical undergraduate differential equations course, so we haven't presented them. There are, however, techniques to deal with that. A table of Laplace transforms will typically have an entry for how to compute the Laplace transform of a power of t times something that you can take the Laplace transform of. And if the thing you can take a Laplace transform of is y prime or y double prime, you can apply that result, okay? But it tends to get fairly complicated fairly quickly. So we just haven't done any examples like that because it tends not to be assigned. Do know, however, that it is still a viable technique, even when your coefficients in your complementary homogeneous equation are not necessarily constants.